Okay, I was planning on making this video anyway, but I saw a thing about the Mike Brown family again, so now I want to make it even more so. Now I'm going to put all the videos concerning Mike Brown below. There's a couple of them. There's at least three, I think. You can watch them. And we're going to have to rehash the same crap again and again and again. Now the... The news today is concerning the lawsuit, the wrongful death lawsuit that's being filed. You know of wrongful death lawsuits from the OJ case. He was found not guilty in the criminal court and not sentenced at all, but then in the civil court he was found liable, which is civil court jargon for guilty, and ordered to pay like $30 million. Okay? You can file a lawsuit to get money from a criminal that wronged you okay now the criminal has to have money so if a guy rapes you and he gets 75 years in prison without parole what is he gonna pay you? cigarettes? okay so you can file a lawsuit <coughs> for civil damages which means it's the plaintiff versus the defendant it's you versus them as opposed to in the criminal court where it's the people versus the, the suspect. Now, once again, we have Mike Brown on videotape committing a robbery. Five minutes later, a police officer is going to lunch, sees two men walking on the WO line in the middle of the road, lowers his window and says, guys, sidewalk please. Some people say he said sidewalk fuck now or whatever, but... Get on the sidewalk. Well, we're almost at a... Is the sidewalk broken? Get on the sidewalk. And then he said, wait a minute. He heard an all points bulletin about a robbery where two black men were suspected and one of them was 300 pounds with a red hat and a white shirt and yellow socks. And then he's like, wait a minute. Yeah, what are the odds, right? So then he calls for backup. Then he starts to block the road. He wants another car to come and help him arrest the two men. And then we have the incident where, you know, you're running forward, shoving the door, going in the car, punching the cop in the face, grabbing his gun, fighting over the gun. Well, I admit, oh, the gun went off several times. The very first shot went off into the door. They were fighting over the gun, and the gun went off, and a bullet went into the door. So from the inside, it must have just hit the inside of the door, whatever. Mike Brown could have fled. Mike Brown kept fighting. The second shot went into Mike Brown's frontal area. Now he flees, but then he changes his mind and comes back. Then he comes back again, and as he comes back again, he shot and killed. Now, I've said in other videos, when you are six foot four and you weigh 300 pounds, your physical being is a deadly weapon. In addition to that, because Mike Brown had not been searched entirely, including mouth and rectal cavity, it is unknown if he has a weapon or not. He might. It was later revealed he didn't, but who knew? And if you're fighting over a gun, the gun is the weapon. You are planning to arm yourself with a police officer's gun. And I was taught in my training, if someone grabs your gun, their intention is to kill you. That's what I was taught. There's no reason for you to physically take a gun from a police officer or a lawfully armed citizen unless you plan to kill them. So now, the grand jury, and videos below, would not indict Officer Wilson on the grounds there was not enough evidence to say he was wrong. You have a 6 foot 4, 300 pound man who climbed into his police vehicle punched him in the face, fought over his gun, was shot once, retreated, decided to come back and advance again in a threatening manner. Now, if a four-year-old girl, I'm sorry, if, if, a, if a four foot tall, 70 pound girl climbed into a police car and slapped or punched the officer, then you could argue he could have subdued it with his hands. But when you're just this massive, humongous man, 
your physical being is a weapon. And now, even after all the evidence came out, forensics, blood, fingerprints, ballistics, uh, autopsy, even after all that evidence was known, Mike Brown's mother is still on record saying they shot her son in the back. The police officer stopped his car, got out of his car, reached up six foot four inches, grabbed her son, pulled him into the car on his lap, started hitting him. The son got up and ran away. The officer pulled out his gun, chased him down the road and shot him in the back. She was still saying that after the fact. That's like saying the Titanic is unsinkable the day after it sank. Mike Brown's father says that if his son and his son's cousin were white, the officer would have passed them right by. Darren Wilson would have went right by, saw two white men walking in the middle of the road, heard an APB that two white men were suspected of a robbery, and drove right past them. Once again, father is much smarter than the son. The attorney was still saying, shot in the back, I mean, after all the evidence was presented, now Eric Holder's Justice Department, the most racist, disgusting piece of shit attorney general ever, has said Mike Brown was the aggressor, he was not surrendering, he was not crying like a little girl, he was attacking. And now they're saying, well, we're still going to sue. And the lawyer said to Sean Hannity, after Sean Hannity ran down everything, well, he still shouldn't have shot him. At what point does deadly force become justified in this man's mind? Now, I had a couple uncles, this is a long time ago. They were 18 and 20. They didn't like each other. They had a fist fight for the billionth time. My older uncle ran out of the house, young uncle ran after him. Young uncle had a butcher knife in his hand. Older uncle punched the young uncle in the face, broke his nose, they heard a siren. Older uncle was smarter, he ran away. Young uncle was stupider, he ran home. He thought he dropped the knife, but he didn't. He's got it in his hand full of adrenaline. And when he gets to the house, the police are there. And all they see is a young guy with a, with a fucking butcher knife in his hand, 18 year old guy. And my uncle's skinny, he's my height and skinny. My uncle takes a knife, puts it to the cop's throat, and calls him the N-word on top of that. The cop's partner pulls out his gun, puts it in my uncle's head and says, drop the knife or I'm going to kill you in front of your mother. Took him into custody. They beat the living fuck out of him. Two years later, he by some miracle goes into the Marine Corps. Three years after that, he's off duty, sitting in his friend's car. His friend goes into a convenience store, whips out a knife and robs the clerk. He gets dishonorably discharged from the Marine Corps and is convicted in civilian court and sent to prison for three years. Whose fault was that? My uncle's. He swears that the friend was robbing the store without his knowledge, but whatever. Whose fault was that? My uncle's. I had a friend of mine from high school, junior high school and high school. I knew him for, at the time, a third of my life. He gets his license to drive. He gets his driver's license on August 4th, 2000. 11 days later, he's headed out to Jones Beach. He's got a girl in the car, two girls in the car, one in the front, one in the back. He's driving. There's another guy following him. They are allegedly in a drag race. My friend gets off the parkway at 100 miles an hour, goes into the parking lot at 100 miles an hour, spins into a donut, crashes into a bus shelter, he dies, the girls are fucked up for life, they're knocked into a coma. The day after he wakes up, we beg him to stop, the day after he's buried, they wake up from the coma. We beg him to stop, he wouldn't stop, he kept going. We were shocked, we could not believe my friend would do this. Even his own mother was like, what the fuck? We could not believe he would do this. But, when the girls woke up and said he was speeding, we had to accept facts. He was being a reckless fuck, he killed himself, 
He almost killed two girls. And thank the sweet Lord Jesus, there were no people standing at the bus shelter. In fact, there were maintenance guys painting one bus shelter. They were supposed to be painting that bus shelter he crashed into. But thank God they were painting another bus shelter and they saw the crash from far away. Thank God they weren't over there. But he could have killed everybody in that parking lot. And it was a really hard for me to sit down and say, okay, my friend could have killed somebody. He stole my friend, and God rest his soul, he paid the price. But we have to accept facts, he did what he did. And his mother told me at another friend of mine's funeral, a few months later, yeah, a lot of my friends died, um, I'm still mad at my son. And I said, no. I said, I'm still mad at my son. That woman loves her son unconditionally, even in, even in the grave. I'm still mad at my son. Man, my stoop, my smart uncle, the one that ran away instead of back home when they were fighting. Years later, he had a couple of problems with alcohol and stealing. And one judge put him in jail, second generation judge, put him in jail once and rehab once. When I did my internship, that judge was retired and his son had taken the bench. And when his son found out about my uncle, his son's like, you know, put me aside, I'm sorry. I'm like, for what? My uncle broke the law. Nothing, my friend had anything personal about that. My uncle chose to break the law, and this man's father was a judge. And he put my uncle in jail once, and he tried to save his life by putting him in rehab once. My uncle ended up dying of liver failure, anyway, but. I still love my uncle, but my uncle was at fault. He should have been obeying the fucking law. And because he didn't obey the law, he went before the judge, and the judge put him in jail. In fact, the judge sentenced him to jail when my grandmother, this is my mother's family, when my grandmother was dying of cancer. And out of respect for my grandmother, the judge postponed his jail sentence until after my grandmother had died and been buried. Because he didn't want my uncle to be in jail when my grandmother was dead. He postponed the jail sentence when my grandmother died, then he went into jail. So the judge did us a service. I was seven back then, it was a long time ago. Gina Sam, I've talked about her before. We follow each other on Twitter. She was a security guard and former police officer at a temple compound. Some guy has a couple of guns, he goes, commits a shooting. She's home on a mental health day. She reads about the shooting and her sixth sense, which puts my sixth sense to shame, says, he's coming for, the, for my church, I gotta go to work today. She went into work, sure enough, he killed a couple guys in the parking lot, injured a couple guys in the parking lot, he came in, she shot him dead, and the family of the shooter came to the church and met with the families of the victims and said, we're so sorry that our loved one did this. And they took Gene aside. They're face to face with the woman that killed their son. And they say, we're not mad at you. We, we understand. We're, we're not mad at all. We, we understand. In fact, we're sorry that our son's going to kill you. When is the Brown family going to pull Michael, pull Dan Wilson aside and say, you know what? We're sorry. We're sorry our son tried to fucking kill you. We're sorry that your life is ruined because our son wanted you dead. Okay? When is the Michael Brown family going to come out and say, you know what? We had an obligation to raise a responsible son. And we fucked up. Okay? Parents, I don't care what color you are. If your 18, 19, 20 year old son is robbing convenience stores and trying to kill police officers, my question is where the fuck were you 18 years ago? Okay? The I I've seen serial killers. Remember the Beltway sniper? He had members of his family come out and apologize to the victims and say, well, we're so sorry. Okay? There comes a time when you have to say, my family member committed a crime. My family member hurt people. I do not condone that behavior. I'm sorry it happened. I still love my family member unconditionally, but I am sorry my family member tried to kill a police officer, tried to burn down an orphanage, okay? Because when I was a kid, I was taught if you 
hurt a police officer, he will protect himself. If you put him in a situation where he fears for his life, he will use violence to protect himself. And I was always taught, if a police officer gives you a lawful command, you must obey it. Get back on the sidewalk. Don't cross the street until the light turns red. Give me your license and registration. This is a dangerous area. You need to leave. We're, we're arresting people here for a crime. You need to leave for your own safety. When a police officer tells you what to fucking do, you don't say fuck you and fight him. If you have a legitimate problem, complain to Internal Affairs later on. You can always complain to Internal Affairs if a police officer abuses you. Okay? But when a police officer says, get back on the sidewalk, and you punch him in the face and grab his fucking gun, what's that going to achieve? We are setting a precedent in this country because if Michael Brown's family is awarded a penny, if they are awarded one penny, you will see every single person who was killed by a police officer during the commission of a violent felony, you will see every one of their family members come out and file a lawsuit as long as the statute of limitations is still okay. So you might have a guy who was being a cop with a bat and another cop shot him in the head and killed him. You might have a guy who had a cop on the ground and was choking him and the cop was going to shot him. Okay? You might have a guy who was running around with a fucking butcher knife in, in the mall and the cop shot him. Okay? You want the Zarnaya family to sue for the Boston police? You will set a precedent in this country if your family member is killed by a police officer during the course of a felony, you can cash in on it. That family must not be given a dime. They must not be given a penny. They need to shut the fuck up. Okay? Because they're not helping anything. And they call the man, they, they call the Darren Wilson a fucking murderer? What the fuck was your son? Darren Wilson's a murderer. What the fuck was your son doing trying to take his gun away from him? The family is in absolute fucking denial to the nth degree. We have to tell the children in this country, okay, you will fucking behave or you will suffer the consequences. And a lot of people say, well, you know, Mike Brown should be the poster child for this image, this movement, um, police brutality, raising awareness. Mike Brown should be raising awareness for don't be a fucking thug. Well, Mike Brown, and the lawyer says Mike Brown was a child. If Mike Brown was a child, why was he not home watching Born the Dinosaur? Why was he out robbing convenience stores and killing, trying to kill cops? Okay? This family needs to go the fuck away. I've had a couple of shit bags in my family. I've had a couple of guys in my family get into trouble. I even shared a couple of stories here with my uncles and... Okay? My family didn't sue the police department when my uncle had a gun, a cop put a gun to his head because the cop was justified. And if the cop shot my uncle in the fucking head, the cop would have been justified. I didn't sue the judge or yell at the judge or blame the judge or curse the judge because his father put my, uncle, my other uncle in jail. My uncle was the one that was wrong. That's why he went to jail. He didn't go to jail because the judge was an asshole. He went to jail because he committed a crime. He wanted to drink alcohol and he wanted to steal. And when you drink alcohol and you steal, you're going to go to jail. Okay? It goes back to the old way. You, you, you blame the person that corrects you. Okay? Darren Wilson didn't murder Mike Brown. Darren Wilson corrected Mike Brown's behavior. Because Mike Brown was being a fucking thug. And Darren Wilson corrected him. That's all it is. It was, think of it as a corrective instruction. That's all. Set a fucking example. I don't feel the least bit sorry for that fucking family. A lot of people say I feel sorry for them. Even, my, even fucking Darren Wilson feels sorry for them. I don't. I don't feel the least bit sorry for you. If you're trying to cash in on your son being a fucking thug. 
I got three nephews. Two and one much younger than Mike Brown. I got two nieces. One of them is older than Mike Brown. If my nieces and my nephews ran like that, I would have taken down Wilson's fucking gun away from him. And I would have shot them myself. When I was a kid, when I was 17, 18, 19, 20, if I was beating the shit out of a cop fighting over a fucking gun, guess what? I'd want the cop to kill me. Because I got a better chance of God than I got my father. I mean, there was a time in American history when if you got in trouble and the police called your parents, your parents beat the shit out of you. Well, my brother, my father, my, my, my father's original family lives in Jersey. This is before I'm born. My father is divorced, my stepmother, he's living in New York with my mother. He gets a phone call to my brother, who was like 19 at the time, was arrested down in Jersey Shore. My brother lived in Parsippany. He was arrested in Jersey Shore for like drinking or some stupid shit. My father had to drive from Yonkers, New York to the Jersey Shore, pick my uncle up at the jail. They didn't want to press charges, they wanted my father to sign him out. No charges, sign him out. So my father went down to the jail, picked my brother up, drove him home to Parsippany. My father's in the shore of the night, my brother's like 5'11". My father brought him in the house, punched him in the fucking face, and walked out of the house and my brother was lying unconscious on the floor. That's what used to happen when we were kids growing up we fucked up. When our parents got the call we were in jail, we got the shit beat out of us when we got home. Okay, if our fathers found out that we were arrested while trying to murder a police officer, our fathers would went to the fucking jail and kill us in the fucking jail. This country is going to shit.